been working on a new bait. It's a brush hog style bait and I wanted to bring you guys along on the journey of how we test this bait after we cut the first mold, which we just cut. It is a giant mold. It is a six cavity, about a five inch long uh, overall body length bait. And we're gonna go to the pond and test it right now. When I say we, I mean, we have Jacob here. We're gonna go test it and then make some revisions and show you guys kind of process of the initial design versus the final product. Also, got Amanda in the shop here. Little little Kai guy, he's eight weeks old. All right, let's go down to the lake. We just showed up at Church Pond and I just saw a fish blow up right behind us. That's a good sign, even though we're just gonna be testing the action quick. We just got a super light little Texas rig. Got like a three aught extra wide gap hook here. This is a great bait for like a Texas rig. You you know, this is like your medium sized creature bait. So you could rig that up on a shaky head. This would be a good Carolina rig bait. There's a variety of different ways you could rig this thing up. You could even cut it down a little bit and put it on the back of a jig, but we're just gonna rig it up. So the way I rig it is nice and straight. And then I always poke the tip in skin hook or tech spose, whatever you want to call that. He knows what he's talking about in case you can't tell. So I'm letting him do the fishing on this. Right off the bat, these legs I can tell are swimming really, really well. They kind of congeal together and have like a, it's really hard to tell there's two of them, but that's kind of how all creature style baits like this with two curly tails are. Yeah, they got like a, the legs have like a really fast uh, fluttery roll to them together. I didn't notice much action out of the side appendages and that's kind of a concern. We want those to have action as well. One thing we just learned though is we need to shoot these baits in white or chartreuse because this water is, very very brown and you cannot see this uh, this like purple this <laughs> at all in here another thing actually he just realized is that at a very 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 slow speed the actual back legs stop having the proper action we were looking for so we're actually going to thin those out too there's actually a step in the leg where i can have the leg be one thickness and then step down to a smaller thickness so we're going to take the tips of the, the curly tails and reduce that and maybe even make the curl a little bit bigger. I was say, if we made the curl more, it would probably add to that action too. So we were about to leave and then uh, he threw it a couple more times. That guy was running <laughs> off with it. Even though the side arms didn't work, he still wanted it. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. Little bass, you can see how pale he is. This water's really stained. These fish don't have much color to him. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, that's awesome, man. Woo! We're back in the shop and we just went through and made all the tweaks we wanted to do and I'm going to walk you guys through all those tweaks. Obviously the bait already worked, but the goal is to make it the best it can be. Here's the original bait. You can see these uh, arms have like this wide supportive base here and this kind of wide curve. We narrowed the base down and made it more of a thinner curve part that has a longer end on it here so that that end catches the water and kicks back and forth even at a slower speed of retrieve. And we also thin it out this way. The next thing on the original bait that we changed was, I call these the, the pants here. It's like legs and pants, right? We shortened the pants and we actually made them thicker by about 20 thousandths of an inch. Wearing the shorts now, and they're thicker shorts. They're like uh, cargo shorts from Carhartt. And then to achieve more fluttering action, the last thing we did was make the actual curly tails on the back of the legs thinner by about 10 thousandths of an inch. That, again, doesn't sound like a lot. Let me show you that. That's 10 thousandths of an inch. It's not a lot, but it, it means a lot. All right, we got the new version of the mold. And I uh, actually messed up in did not make the pants shorter on this cavity, but they are shorter on these two. So I'll have to change that for the final. We have three different uh, vent types of these super deep runners that are used to pull air out from between the cavities from all these little vents. Then we have these slightly smaller vents that lead up to this super fine one to two thousandths of an inch deep micro vents, which are along the body. So the reason we do that is so that none of the plastic travels through the vent. And we highly recommend not changing or modifying venting because we do test these and they should shoot perfectly from here. So when you order your mold, you shouldn't have to cut extra vents or anything like that. And then Jacob is going to be shooting this in a white color so that we can see the baits in the water this time. We got the fan running in the window there. He's got uh, the eye protection and gloves on. So try to minimize the chances of getting burnt. This is super hot plastisol. You're shooting at 330 degrees. We're using a medium blend of uh, plastisol from Beat Plastics today. Perfectly 
So after he injected that, he just held a little bit of arm weight on the top of the injector just to make sure that as that's hardening, it gets a little extra plastic salt down in there. This is cooled off. We're going to demold this and he is getting the next color ready, which is going to be uh, similar to the first color we threw, which I don't know if you could see in the pond earlier, but we want to have the same color so that we give them an equal chance against each other. Oh, Ooh, how'd shoot? shot that awesome. Good? Let me show you guys. Falling out there. Everything shot awesome. Even all the way up to the tips of these little bitty uh, arms. I was a little concerned this wouldn't shoot all the way because when you get that really thin plastic, it's hard to get them all the way in there without the mold being warmed up. And this we shot cold. So we did thinner arms, more of a curl. I can tell you right now, just based on what I'm seeing, those arms are definitely going to flap around. And then remember we thinned out the legs here and we shortened the pants. I don't know if that's weird that I call them the pants, but we actually thickened them up a little bit too from the side. So I think this bait is going to uh, swim awesome, but uh, we will go test in the lake and see. So they all came up on that part. No bubbles in the legs. I mean, even those legs, are, those are so thin. And I don't even really know what I'm doing. I literally just started shooting baits like, what would you say, three weeks ago? Yeah, three weeks ago. Yeah. So, I mean, this is like my third week of shooting baits. And, you know, Jason's obviously kind of guided me a little bit, but those turned out awesome. We got all of our baits shot. We are now going to run back to that little pond over there. And I hope they're going to swim awesome. I, I mean, we're both feeling like the changes we made are going to be amazing now that we see the bait, you know, in person. But we're going to run down there quick, throw these, see if we can catch some fish. And we can actually see the action because we have them in white now. So we were about to head to the lake and we stopped by Finn Guy's little pool here to do an action test. I want to get the camera quick and show you guys because it's amazing. Finn, say hi. Hello. You see that? Finn Guy, don't throw other baits in there. So yes, he plays with baits. He has a whole bunch of nuggets and puds and stuff over there that he, uh, he plays in his pool with. The legs, the arms. The arms everything's moving. We're gonna carry on and actually go to the lake now and test them. The first thing we're gonna throw is the old, the first, the original style of brush hog we made across the top of the water. And those arms actually do uh, have action when you rip it across the top of the water. So once you start getting it going, you can slow it down, but to get like, there it goes, it stop. What we're seeing is that the arms did actually flap on that original style. Uh, that was hard to see with the other bait. With this white one, you could really see it. But you had to go really fast to get them to go. And then you could slow down to a moderate pace and keep them going. But if you slowed down too much, they would stop. And you had to basically rip the bait to get them going again. So now we're going to throw on the other one and see the action on that. Is the other one. It's, yeah. It's got an awesome flap. Yeah, he's barely moving this one. And it's just, it's kicking like crazy right now. What I like about this is you've got those front two appendages that have a much quicker like really kind of fast moving action but then those back two legs have a real slow more methodical kind of kicking action at a slow speed so you've got multiple different speeds of action in one bait which is which is really neat yeah, um, yeah we thin those front legs out and they have a much much better action on them at a lot slower speed too so the now that the action's proven out it's exactly what we want this is going to be the final design of this um, there's a couple other ways that we could rig this up. That is a Texas rig. There's also a shaky head we have set up on the other rod. But we're just going to cruise the uh, the lake edge here. He's got a GoPro on, and we're going to see if we can get some, some hookups here. Hey, Finn. How's it going? Oh! That's a good one, guys. Check that out. Caught that guy on that newly improved creature bait. That's a solid pound right there. I just pitched it over to the corner of that primrose over there and hopped it a few times. And he smoked it. Sweet. That's on that new... Oh, he took off one of our little arms, but <laughs> hey, that's all right. It worked. Nice. Solid, man. Nice work. Thanks, man. That's a good fish.
That's awesome, dude. He clobbered it. I thought that was going to be like two or three pounds when I first hooked it because it fought hard. The key when you're rigging a bait up like this is you want to make sure everything's nice and straight. Just figured I'd show you. You kind of pull the plastic, back it up, and then stu you know stab the tip of the hook in there. And that's our uh, newly redesigned Woo! creature bait. You <laughs> and you're just pulling whole plants out of the ground. Sometimes they're right off to that side of it. There he is. Got him. That's the big one, dude. <laughs> That's the big one, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, his gill like got all messed up. What in the world just happened? Dude, that's a chunk. Oh man, oh my gosh, another one of these giant spiders. Quality fish. Oh man, yeah, his gill got all messed up. Make sure he gets back nice here. The quicker you get them back, if they're bleeding, the better they're gonna do. So we don't wanna keep them out of the water very long. Get this guy nice and revived. Thanks, buddy. Hopefully you'll be all right. There he goes. All right, so there's a second fish. That was actually pretty decent. What did you say, two and a half pounder? Two and a half, yeah. Two and, sure. and a half pounder on the, on the new bait. And unfortunately, got a little bit of the gill on there. So it, it's a little bit of bleeding going on. But hopefully, we got him back in the water really quick. You know, we don't throw him back. We make sure to put him back properly. Hopefully, he heals up and he's good to go. We're back at the shop and I went ahead and worked on two other molds. So not only is this mold now available, that's the six cavity, five inch hog. It's going to be called the hog, H-A-W-G. We also have a two cavity version of the five inch hog. And because I know some of you guys are going to ask for it, we went ahead and made a six cavity tail mold. One thing we noticed when we kept fishing was that the style bait that had the longer pants, not the sweet little cargo shorts, the longer pants one actually had a better flutter. And I think that was because the thicker, more rigid part of the leg helped keep those two curly tails apart as it was swimming. So we actually went ahead and went back to pants. Sorry, shorts, no offense, but the pants worked better. As always, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this bait build today. Let me know in the comments what kind of baits you want to see or if you like this video or what you didn't like about the video. And if you just want the baits, not the actual molds, go to our Instagram page. There's a lot of people on there posting that they have these molds, so check that out. And as always, have an awesome day.